Hey guys, Jake here, coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to find the area between the curves y equals x squared and x equals y squared. So I've already done another video where I showed you how to find the area between two curves, and I want to show you this example because it's kind of a weird one, but it does come up, uh, this kind of concept does come up a lot, so I want to make sure you know how to do it. But the reason I'm showing you how to do these problems is this is one of the formulas on my Calculus 2 study guide or Integral Calculus study guide. There's a link down in the description if you want to check that out. So I highly recommend going over there and getting that. Should make studying for tests, doing your homework, all that kind of stuff a lot easier for you. It has all the important formulas that you need to get through Integral Calculus. So it should make your life a lot easier. So I highly recommend checking that out. It's available for instant download. So you can just click over there, go get that right away and start using it today. But let's go ahead and jump into this problem. So like I said, I did another problem like this. And in that problem, I showed you how to do this kind of using the graphs of the function. So I want to show you, and if you want to check that out, just click up in the corner of your screen up there. But I'm going to show you how to do this problem without really worrying about graphing the functions. So I'm just going to show you how to do it mathematically uh, and algebraically, not really worrying about graphs. But one thing I do want to point out, I always do recommend people graph or draw pictures of whatever the math problem is giving you. It makes it so much easier to figure out how to set things up. So even though I'm going to show you how to do this without drawing a graph, I highly recommend that when you're doing these problems, especially when you're first learning them, that you try and graph out what you're given before you try and find the area between them because it will make your life so much easier. But I just want to show you how you can do this problem just using the formula on my study guide. So the first step to find the area between two curves is figure out where those two curves intersect with each other. So, you know, in the other video where I, I did a problem like this, basically what we did was we, we took our functions and set them equal to each other. And that's probably what you've seen. But in this case, it's a little weird because we have y equals some function of x, and then we have x equals some function of y. So in order to set these functions equal to each other, to figure out where they intersect, we need to get them both to be either y equals some function of x or x equals some function of y. It doesn't really work when one is one and one is the other. You can't set them equal. So usually it's easiest to get y equals some function of x. So I'm gonna show you that way. I mean, in this case, it's not really gonna make it easier or harder whether you get them in terms of x or y. But since we usually see y equals some function of x, that's what I'm going to show you here. So obviously this first function here, y equals x squared, we already have y equals some function of x. So we don't need to do anything with that one. But let's look at this one, x equals y squared. What we want to do is get y all by itself. So we just have y equals everything else. So what we essentially want to do is just take this equation, x equals y squared, and solve for y. Well, to get y all by itself, all we have to do is square root both sides, right? And when we square root both sides, we're going to get y equals the square root of x. But one important thing to keep in mind is when you square root both sides like this, we actually need to take the positive and the negative square root of the other side of our equation. So now we have two functions, which are y equals some function of x. One is x squared, and one is the positive and negative square root of x. So what we need to do now is set these functions equal to each other. Well, the kind of weird thing here is this positive and negative square root of x. So what we could do is we could take x squared and set it equal to the positive square root of x. And take x squared and set it equal to the negative square root of x. <clears throat> and solve both of these equations and figure out where they are equal, which would tell us where they intersect with each other. However, if you just look at this equation right here, we can see that there's actually going to be no x values that satisfy that equation. x squared will never equal the negative square root of x. And the reason why is if you take, well, I guess that's not entirely true. They would be equal at x equals zero, but so would this. So it's not going to give us any additional information. And the reason why is if we have something to an even power, this term right here is never going to be negative. x squared can never be less than zero because if you square something, it's going to be a positive number. Or if you square zero, you're just going to get zero. So these would intersect at x equals zero. 
But any other x value we plug in over here, we're going to get a negative number on the right side of our equation and a positive number on the left side. So other than x equals 0, this is not going to have any solutions. So let's go ahead and solve this equation then. Well, if we want to solve this equation, probably the, the easiest thing we could do would be to first square both sides. So squaring both sides is going to give us x to the fourth equals x. And then what we can do is subtract our x over so that we just have x to the fourth minus x equals zero. Usually getting zero on one side of your equation equals all the other stuff is going to be the easiest way to solve a polynomial like this, like x to the fourth equals x. Because now what we can do is we can factor an x out of this side of our equation. So we get x equals x cubed minus one. And that still equals zero. And the reason this is nice is because if you have a product of two things and you know that product equals zero, that will be true whenever either one of these terms equals zero. So we can get two separate equations that should be easier. One is just going to be x equals zero, which I already mentioned is going to be one of the solutions to this equation up here and this one. And then we're also going to get x cubed minus one equals zero. So now we can solve this easier equation for x. So we can add one over to the other side, get x cubed equals one, and then take the cube root of both sides of our equation and we get x equals 1. So x equals 1 and x equals 0 are the two x values where these two functions intersect with each other. So that tells us if we're trying to set up an integral, which represents the area between these two curves, the bounds of our integral need to be 0 and 1, because that is where these two functions intersect with each other. So now what we need to figure out is which of these two functions is our top function and which one is our bottom function over this interval from zero to one. So we don't need to worry about the negative square root of x because we figured out that that's not really gonna be relevant in this problem, but we can use the x squared and the positive square root of x. So basically all we need to do is take some number within this interval here from zero to one plug it into x squared and plug it into the square root of x and figure out which one is bigger. So I'm going to suggest plugging in 1 fourth. If we plug in x equals 1 fourth into both of those equations, we'll be able to figure out which is higher, which one's lower. The reason I suggest x equals 1 fourth is because 1 fourth is going to be something that we can easily plug into x squared and it's something that we can easily plug into the square root of x and it is between 0 and 1. So it does have to be between 0 and 1. x equals 1 fourth should be a pretty easy thing to plug in. So if we plug it into x squared, we're going to get 1 fourth squared, which is 1 16th. And then if we plug it into the square root of x, we're going to get the square root of 1 fourth, which is 1 half. So at x equals 1 fourth, the square root of x is 1 half, which is much bigger than 1 16th, which is what x squared is at x equals 1 fourth. So since 1 half is bigger than 1 16th, that tells us that the square root of x is our top function and that x squared is our bottom function. So now when we go back to this integral that we're setting up to find the area between these two functions, we just have to do our top function minus our bottom function. Our top function is the square root of x, and our bottom function is x squared. And like I said, I'm not going to show you how to do this graphing, but if you were to graph both of these functions, you could confirm two things. First of all, that they intersect at x equals 0 and x equals 1, and also that the square root of x is higher than x squared between that interval. So this integral here should give us the area between those two functions. So First thing I would recommend when you're integrating a function like this or with any root is to convert it into a power. If you convert a root into a power, it's going to be easier to integrate. And then we'll leave our x squared as x squared. Now to integrate this function, we can do it using the power rule. So we're going to take this, we're going to raise our power by one. One half plus one is going to be three halves. And then we're going to divide it by our new power. Well, dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So instead of dividing by 3 halves, we can multiply by 2 thirds. 
it's kind of kind of messy to have fractions within fractions. A fraction in our denominator is kind of a mess. So it's better to just multiply by the reciprocal instead. And then we can again raise the power by one, giving us x cubed, and then dividing by our new power of three, which is the same as multiplying by one third. And then we can integrate this, or I'm sorry, evaluate this from zero to one. So plugging in one into this function for x is going to give us x to the three halves, which is, or I'm sorry, one to the three halves, which is just one times two thirds minus one third times one cubed, which is again, just one. So that's the result of plugging in one. Then if we plug in zero, we're going to get zero to the three halves, which is zero minus one third times zero to the third, which is again zero. So we're gonna get zero when we plug in zero. When we plug in one, we get this. When we plug in zero, we get this. So to evaluate this function from zero to one, we plug in the upper bound, plug in the lower bound, and subtract the two. Of course, subtracting zero, like in this case, doesn't really do anything. So this piece here isn't gonna contribute anything. We just need to simplify this. So we're gonna get two thirds times one, which is two thirds minus one third times one, which is just one third, two third minus one third is one third. So the area between these two functions, y equals x squared and x equals y squared should just be one third. So like I said, this method and this formula is talked about on my calculus two study guide. I highly recommend checking that out. There's a link down in the description so you can go download that right now if you don't already have that. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to drop them in the comments below. Thanks and see you next time.